This is Film Bookcast. Film Bookcast. Film Bookcast. The official podcast of Film Book. Get ready for the latest in film news, TV show news, and theatrical reviews. Film Book's podcast starts now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Film Bookcast, the official podcast of Film Book. My name is Chris Banks. If you're tuning into Film Bookcast for the first time, first of all, welcome. And what I do on this podcast is discuss the latest film and TV show news. I also review an in-theater film when it's not a pandemic. You can find more about Film Bookcast on film-book.com by using the search term Film Bookcast. You can also email us at podcast at film-book.com with Film Bookcast in the subject line. Let's jump right into it this week. In exciting TV news... Showtime series The First Lady has cast Aaron Eckhart to play President Gerald Ford. The anthology series will look at the lives of first ladies. Described as a rethinking of the American presidency told through the lens of the women in the heart of the White House, Eckhart joins previously announced series stars Viola Davis, Michelle Pfeiffer, who will play Michelle Obama and Betty Ford, respectively. The first season of the series will also explore the life of Eleanor Roosevelt, with that role yet to be cast. Eckhart is primarily known for his film roles, having starred in features like The Core, The Dark Knight, Night and bleed for this. The First Lady is written and executive produced by Aaron Cooley. If you're a fan of Kate Winslet, HBO's Mar of East Town released its trailer for its new TV miniseries. The Mar of East Town stars Kate Winslet, Sosie Bacon, David Denham, Neil Huff, among many others. Kate Winslet stars as Mary Sheehan, a small town Pennsylvania detective. Julia Nicholson stars as Lori Ross, Marie's best friend since childhood. Jean Smart plays Helen, Marie's mother, a small-town Pennsylvania detective who investigates a local murder as life crumbles around her. Watch the trailer for Mar of East Town. It debuts on HBO April 18th. Fans of James Nesbitt can soon enjoy a heavily accented dose of the stone-faced Northern Irish actor as he leads a gripping four-part Irish crime thriller from executive producer Jen Mercurio, the force behind police thriller's Line of Duty and Bodyguard. Written by Chris Brandon, who cites True Detective and the Killing as inspirations, Bloodlands follows a veteran detective who must plumb his own dark past to solve a cold case. It'll premiere this spring on Acorn TV. When an expensive car containing a suicide note but no body is pulled from the scene, veteran Northern Ireland police detective Ton Brannock instantly sees the connection to an infamous cold case that holds enormous personal significance for him, a notorious and long-buried series of mysterious disappearances. Bloodlands follows his obsessive campaign to identify an unmask the semi-mythical figure behind these events. A figure codenamed Goliath after the giant shipyard cranes Samson and Goliath that dominate the Belfast skyline. It's a case that comes from Tom's and his country's dark past. Bloodlands speaks about where Northern Ireland is now, and those not familiar with Northern Ireland will hopefully come away with a sense of a place that finds itself thriving and booming and looking to move forward, but is also carrying the profoundly tragic memories of a violent past and trying to deal with those two things at the same time. Bloodlands premieres on Acorn TV on March 15th, and you can check out the trailer now. Are you ready for some film trailers? Disney has released the Cruella trailer starring Emma Stone as a young Cruella de Vil. Cruella stars Emma Stone, Emma Thompson, Mark Strong, among many others. Dana Fox and Tony McNamara wrote the screenplay for Cruella. Academy Award winner Emma Stone stars in Disney's Cruella, an all-new live-action feature film about the rebellious early days of one of cinema's most notorious and notoriously fashionable villains, the legendary Cruella de Vil. Cruella is set in the 1970s London amidst the punk rock revolution, follows a young grifter named Estella, a clever and creative girl determined to make a name for herself in her designs. She befriends a pair of young thieves who appreciate her appetite for mischief, and together they are able to build a life for themselves on the streets of London. One day, Estella's flair for fashion catches the eye of a Baroness von Hellman, a fashion legend who is devastatingly chic and terrifyingly hot, played by two-time Oscar winner Emma Thompson. But their relationship sets in motion a course of events and revelations that will cause Estella to embrace her wicked side and become the rocious fashionable, and revenge-bent Cruella. Watch the Cruella trailer now. It debuts May 28th in theaters. 
Sabin Films has released a trailer for John Bolagero's The Vault. When an engineer played by Freddie Highmore learns of a mysterious, impenetrable fortress hidden under the Bank of Spain, he joins a crew of master thieves who plan to steal the legendary lost treasure locked inside while the whole country is distracted by Spain's World Cup final. With thousands of soccer fans cheering in the streets and security forces closing in, the crew have just minutes to pull off a score of a lifetime. Watch the Volt trailer. It debuts March 26th on Video On Demand. Now let's get over to film news. This week brings with it 25 new movies that will become available on what is arguably the six biggest streaming entities available. Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, HBO Max, Disney Plus, and Peacock. The full list of 25 movies seen on Forbes, the biggest and perhaps only box office hit from 2020 is coming to both Amazon Prime and Hulu. Sonic the Hedgehog surprised everyone with great reviews from critics. Catch Sonic the Hedgehog on Amazon Prime February 14th. On Netflix, there's a new comedy called I Care A Lot. It stars Roseman Pike, Eliza Gonzalez, and Peter Dinklage. It centers on a legal guardian who finds herself in trouble when she tries to defraud somebody who has ties to a powerful gangster. Watch I Care A Lot on Netflix. In other movie news, as Mission Impossible 7 nears completion after a remarkable globetrotting pandemic-era shoot, the plan to shoot the franchise's 8th edition back-to-back -back has been altered by Paramount. This is simply down to the shifting release calendar. Star Tom Cruise will now be needed on promotional duties by Paramount for Top Gun. Once that film is released, hopefully to a packed cinema in a post-COVID world, production for Mission Impossible 8 can begin, meaning the gap won't make too much of an impact. Production of the seventh Mission Impossible film was supposed to commence last February, but was postponed due to the pandemic. Mission Impossible 7 is on the calendar for November 19th, 2021, and looks to be on track for the theater release. For this week's movie review, we're going to check out Judas and the Black Messiah, Shaka King's debut film. Inspired by true events, the project originated with King and his writing partner, Will Burson, who co-wrote the screenplay. King, who has a long relationship with filmmaker Ryan Coogler, pitched the film to Coogler and Charles D. King, who are producing the film with Shaka King. It stars Daniel Kaluuya, Lakeith Stanfield, and Jesse Piemans, as well as Dominic Fishback, Ashton Sanders, and Martin Sheen, Algie Smith, Daryl Brick Gibson, Dominique Thorne, Amari Chatham, Galeb Aberhart, and Lil Real Howery. Judas and the Black Messiah revolves around FBI informant William O'Neill, played by Lakeith Stanfield, who infiltrates the Illinois Black Panther Party and is tasked with keeping tabs on their charismatic leader, Chairman Fred Hampton, played by Daniel Kaluuya. A career thief, O'Neill reveals the danger of both manipulating his comrades and his handler, Special Agent Roy Mitchell, played by Jesse Piemans. Hampton's political prowess grows just as he's falling in love with fellow revolutionary Deborah Johnson, played by Dominique Fishback. Meanwhile, a battle wages for O'Neill's soul. Will he line with the forces of good or subdue Hampton and the Panthers by any means as FBI director J. Edgar Hoover commands. Judas and the Black Messiah is one of the most powerful films I have watched definitely this year and maybe even last year. It honestly brings me back to pre-pandemic times because we had a string of extremely powerful films in 18 and 19 and Judas fits that cloth. It is an unbelievable, powerful cinematic experience. Shaka King is an absolute genius. The writing is tremendous. Lakeith is one of my favorite actors in the whole world. He is literally a genius. He is a chameleon. I love him. I love him so much. And that's not even talking about the star of the movie. The star of the movie is Daniel Kaluuya. Holy crap is all you can say about Daniel Kaluuya's performance. It is so powerful. I had no knowledge of this story going into it. It is an unbelievable true story. I cannot believe that this actually happened. And that's really why I love film so much. This film made me dive into uh, J. Edgar Hoover in a way that I'm still doing. I'm still learning about this man and what he did being in power for so long and really who he held back by being in power for so long. Judas and the Black Messiah is a cinematic, artistic, cultural achievement of 
unbelievable proportions in my opinion it is a tremendous tremendous movie the writing is great the acting is great the cinematography is amazing the tension is great the story is amazing william o'neill as a human being is a, a tremendously tragic story i i can't believe it even having watched the film i'm still sitting here speechless at learning about a nugget of william o'neill's life right Lakeith is a brilliant actor. I'm sure if William was alive, he would be so proud to see what Lakeith did to his life because he brought his, what he did was he brought his life to life. He gave me a sense of the confliction and the tension and the insaneness that William O'Neill was dealing with at the time, right? Because now I, 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 as a white man in 2020, have a crazy sad understanding of what the black panthers were involved with in the 70s i in a way that i never thought i would being born in the 90s right that's why this movie is so powerful for me because the things that william o'neill was dealing with and the way that this movie gives you a, a window into his strength as well as what is pressuring him and weighing him down is just very powerful and it's a really sharp movie it's 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 witty it's funny it's relevant because you see aspects of today in this movie which makes me mad but it's, it's good because you see where we can work right now to really um help connect those dots and and complete the ironing of some wrinkles if you know what i mean but then the movie tells multiple stories at, at one time, right? Because we get a sense of what Fred Hampton's life is like, played by Daniel Kaluuya. An absolutely unbelievable and powerful performance by Daniel Kaluuya. You can't really justify his acting with a review with the podcast because when you watch this film, you will feel the power of his acting. You will get goosebumps. You will get angry. You will get sad. You will feel empathy you will you know that's how great daniel kaluuya is and you cannot underestimate his performance in this film it is a tremendous tremendous accomplishment and i hope that he wins an award and you also can't underestimate uh jesse peemans either because this man is a busy actor and he's fantastic at uh he plays special agent roy mitchell who hoover sent to pay for informants and infiltrate the black panther party but jesse does a tremendous job giving you a sense of his job right because he's he's a foot soldier in 1970s the way the government operated you get a sense of how delicate an operation it is one bad slip of the tongue right one and not only does an organization collapse but you reveal the government's complicity in the responsibility of what is happening on the ground during those times right what you will leave this film with is a is hopefully a, a hunger to understand things that you don't understand um, or revisit things that you thought you knew because as the story unfolds you will see um, just how tragic infuriating it is it's crazy it's a crazy story it's an absolutely unbelievable story this is another one where i wish that the world was normal and we could be watching this together because it's such a movie theater movie. It lifts you, you know, it lifts you. It informs you. It makes you hungry. It makes you yearn. It makes you ask. It makes you feel. These are why I love movies. These things that they make us do, these feelings they make us feel, these the impact that it has on our culture is why I love movies so much. And Judas and the Black Messiah brings me back to childhood in watching a movie that is just so damn powerful and so well made and so well crafted that it really gives you, you know, gets your juices flowing. This movie gets your juices flowing, man. It is a tremendously acted movie. I won't give away what happens, but all I will say is that it's just infuriating. You know, the 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 moving pieces of the of the story, the positions that Lakeith's character is put in, the things that Fred Hampton had to do is very sad. You know, and it's very disappointing but only through watching a movie like judas and the black messiah will we actually understand our responsibility today 
and what we have to do now to make sure that we square the circle, if you know what I mean. Warner Brothers presented the picture and it is available right now on HBO Max. It is also in theaters. It will be on HBO Max until February 12th. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Film Bookcast. You can find more of my work on film-book.com. Just search for Chris Banks or Film Bookcast. You can find me on Twitter. I'm at CBanksy. I'm also on Instagram. I'm at the Chris Banks. If you listen to this podcast on iTunes or another podcast service, please consider rating and review this episode. If you're listening to this podcast on our YouTube channel, Film Book Podcast, please like our video, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a comment in the comment section. It really helps other people discover our podcast. Please also consider becoming one of our patrons on Patreon at patreon.com slash filmbook. Your support helps us create more engaging content. You'll find our Patreon link below in the description. If you want to tweet about this podcast, just use the hashtag filmbookcast. Tune in next week for the next episode of the Filmbookcast. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you then.